Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. I was hoping to have the second bag of Educa's Around the World Jigsaw Puzzle completed for you all for today's video. However, it's taken me a bit longer, so that'll be the next video. In the meantime, you may well know that I'm practicing speed puzzling because I'll be going to the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships in Spain this September. So I've done three speed runs. I'm participating in the individuals and I know it'll be a 500 piece Ravensburger Jigsaw Puzzle. I'll be doing pairs with Jeanette from Jeanette and Her Puzzles. The qualifying for that is a 500 piece and then the finals is one 1,000 piece. So in preparation for that, Wendy and I are actually going to speed puzzle together. For the first time, we'll do a 500 piece together, but speed puzzling. So that'll be in a future video to come. We haven't done it yet. And then I'm also participating in the teams, again with Jeanette, as well as with Vicky from Vicky Makes and Builds and Juby from Jigsaw Juby. And there, I believe both the preliminary and the finals, we get two 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzles to do. We're given four puzzles and I think we pick two of the four to build. So I'm practicing individuals, 500 piece Ravensburger. I'll then practice pairs with Wendy, 500 piece Ravensburger. I mean, we all live so far apart. Jeanette's in Slovenia, Vicky's in the UK, and Juby's in Australia. So we're just practicing as much as we can on our own. So this is a compilation video. Here are the three puzzles I've done. The first is Floor Reflections. You may recognize it because they used it at last year's championships. So we'll see how I do. Then I did this one. Paige picked it out for me. And it's a Christmas scene and this one is called, I should have noted the name. What's it called? Enchanted Christmas. And then the last one I did was Lake Como. Wendy picked that one out for me. So I chose to do this one, which I thought was illustration, but when it comes down to it, it's a photograph and then maybe some photoshopping going on, but it is definitely much more photograph. This is purely illustration and that's a photograph. So we'll see how I do. Here are the time lapses. I'll do a voiceover and I'll chat about my techniques. I did a full sort on this one because it's a color block. I did my build as I sort technique on this one. And then I decided to try one more time the full flip and sort as I go on that one. So which one do you think I was the fastest at doing and, and which one was the trickiest? Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So I started out with the floral reflections and I decided because it was very much a color block image that I would fully sort. Reds, orange, yellows, greens, and then the blues and purples, I kind of grouped them all together. I didn't want to spend too much time trying to separate them out. I felt I did pretty okay apart from the yellow and oranges. Those were trickier to separate. Now I got this puzzle second hand and there was a note saying that there was one blue piece missing. So I will add 10 seconds to my final time. I thought the sorting was good. Wendy looked at my time. She said I took just over nine minutes to fully sort. I have no idea if that's a good time for a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle to fully sort in nine minutes. I was pleased with that. I struggled already with that red section. I felt the orange section, I thought I did okay. I struggled a lot with that yellow section because it was so repetitive. Now watching this back, it almost looks like I'm struggling with the orange as well, to tell you the truth. I think the easiest section was actually that green whitish section and the water. Oh my goodness. It, it was harder than I expected. Now this puzzle was used in one of the qualifying rounds at the Worlds in 2022. So I went and I looked up my time and when I'm all done, I'll let you know where I would have placed. I really had to use the box here for these yellow flowers because they were very repetitive. It was like the same flower, same design. It was so similar. I pulled out, you can see the transition pieces between the two sections. That helped me out because then I had more sides to try to connect with the piece. I think eventually I do even some piece sorting, but I really did have to rely on the box. And oh wow, this yellow section had me struggling. I was frustrated and I thought, oh goodness, I'm, I'm not breaking any records here today. But funny enough, this white section, whitish green, was easy. I felt it was easier because there wasn't so much repeated. 
See, it looks like I'm going so much faster with this section. Oh, wow. And then the last two sections, um, I didn't think were that tricky, maybe because there was only one big flower in the blue. The purple was repetitive, but it went lighter to darker. And the edges, like the red section and the purple section, had a lot less pieces there. I know it looks a bit chaotic at the moment watching this back. I'm like, how did I even figure this all out? But up close, you can definitely tell which pieces go in the water reflection area and which pieces go in the flower. So that did help. But uh, I thought this was difficult. So you're about to see my time. It's getting there. It's getting there. My fastest time, remember, was kitten in a cup at 1 minute 11 seconds. Oh, sorry, 1 minute 11 seconds, I wish. 1 hour, 11 minutes. Here, I end up finishing 1 hour, and we'll round it up to 1 hour, 18 minutes. So if I would have gone to the competition, I would have been like the 80th entry, and that would have finished me dead center at 40th. And here's some where Alejandro finished. He did it in 32 minutes, the top five places. 32 minutes to what is that, like 48 minutes. So much faster. So the next puzzle I did was the Enchanted Christmas. You'll see that Paige is puzzling next to me. This is so interesting because we have completely different techniques and styles. The reason why I wanted to puzzle next to someone on the same table is to mimic the competition settings. We are going to have approximately this size area to work with and someone's going to be next to me. So this was perfect. You'll see that she's doing pretty much a full sort, but trying to keep the pieces all nice upwards. Some of them are jumbled, the cat and the blue cup. She's sorting out the border. I'm doing my build as I sort. Now I'm making piles of the Christmas tree, of the window area, some unknown red pieces, and then like unknown pieces. But I'm literally trying to build as much as I can as going along through the pieces in the box. I felt I did pretty good. Asking Paige, she said that it was quite nerve wracking. She felt I started off really fast, that kind of in the middle I slowed down, and then I picked up pace again at the end. So I'm wondering if I'm having trouble maintaining tempo, if I kind of get into like more casual puzzling mode, if I need to keep reminding myself, go, 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 faster, faster, faster. I don't know. Of course, speeding up near the end makes sense because I have less pieces to put in, like there's less holes, so I can figure out where they go probably faster. Um, there were some tricky parts to this puzzle. For some reason, that penguin again. There's a little penguin in the image, threw me off completely. I did try to rely a lot less on the box. I'm like, look, look at the puzzle on the table. See if you can find the pattern on the table and the, the shape of the pieces that are missing and see if you can put it in right away without always jumping back to the box. I do believe I'm getting better at using the puzzle more and the box less. I still use the box a lot to begin with because I gotta start somewhere. But overall, I do think I'm getting better at just looking at the puzzle and figuring out where pieces go and not always jumping to the box for every single piece, which I think is smart and good because that would just slow me down. And overall, I have seen, you know, improvements in my time. What was it? My first 500 piece Robinsberger speed puzzle run took me an hour and 50 minutes. So you see, I did the, uh, the window area because those pieces were off to the side. Then here I did the tree. And I'm better at moving the puzzle around towards me. I'm better at bringing things closer. But you have a small area to work in. That tree was a bit tricky, of course, because it was kind of repetitive. There's like popcorn garland on it, which is what I concentrated on doing. So you see here I finished. 113 seems to be the magic number. Uh, I was so appreciative of Paige puzzling along with me. It was lots of fun. I ended up doing another puzzle and then I helped her finish off the kitty cat in that one. And then the final puzzle. Now this was a new puzzle. Wendy picked it out so there was the plastic wrap and everything on it. My goodness, my hands were so blue. So I'm trying to do the full flip and sort method. At the top I have sky. Um, then next to that there's like greenery. Then there's the buildings. At the bottom, I have the border pieces. And then in the other corner, 
I have the water. Basically, I'm mimicking what I'm seeing on the box. To me, this is just chaotic. This is the area that I need to work in at the competition. And you're going to notice that I'm often shuffling and moving pieces out of the way so I have more work area. The other thing is, I asked Wendy, I said time, and she looked at my time, and I felt I was done sorting, and it was, how, what time was it? It was like 11 minutes. So it definitely took me longer to kind of flip and sort than just doing a full sort compared to the floral reflections. And then that water area, I don't know why. Oh, that was tricky, and I think it was because I didn't do a proper sort, so I was missing some pieces, and it threw me off a bit. The sky pieces were easy enough to pull out, and then I also pulled out the transition sky tree pieces. So I did quite well with the sky, I was pleased with that. And then I went down to work towards the water again, there's some flowers, and then there's an out of focus area down there, which I leave completely to the end, because I just know it's not happening. So as I found the out of focus, greenery areas, I put them towards the bottom of the puzzle. I'm starting to work on the buildings now. And what I tried to do, you see here, I picked out all the yellow buildings, the yellow pieces for that yellow building. Then I was trying to pick out white buildings and the terracotta kind of color buildings. I was trying to place them as quickly as possible without relying too much on the box, but I did use the box a lot. But overall, I, maybe I should have analyzed this video more. I do think I built those buildings pretty fast. And I did the sky pretty fast because the sky had a lot of shading and lines going in one direction. I think what really slowed me down a bit was the full flipping. The water area was a bit trickier, but basically all that greenery at the end. You're gonna see here, I think it's about the one hour, nine minute mark. All I have left is pretty much greenery pieces and it doesn't look like I have that many left, but you'll see how much longer it takes me to finish them all. Again, I just kind of build the border as I see fit as it comes along. And yeah, here soon, I think I asked Wendy to look at the time or I looked at the time. Yeah, at the, nine hour, at the one hour, nine minute mark, it's just these green pieces. And I'm trying so hard to put them in without looking too much at the box because the box isn't helping too much. It's mostly like darker to lighter pieces. And this took some time. In fact, my final time you're gonna see is nearly not within the qualification of 90 minutes, but I managed it. I managed to do it in one hour and 24 minutes. And look, that's the out of focus area at the bottom. So tricky, so difficult. But there you go, one hour, 24 minutes. Okay, so first of all, the floor reflections. This yellow section, was so tricky. And the water part, the orange, yellow, I just, if you want to give me a difficult puzzle, give me animal fur, give me out of focus areas, or give me stuff that looks very paintbrush strokey. I love things like this illustration with the definite lines. I do think the full sort was really good and the best option for this one. It's very much a color block. I'm pleased with my time, but it was a lot more difficult than I expected. How do people do these so quickly? What is Alejandro's time on that one? Is it 32 minutes? 30? It's just over 30 minutes. I, I cannot fathom. I don't understand. I love the illustration. Love the build as I sort. And I realized that with this one, I tried to focus less on the box try to use my memory of the image, try to put pieces in before I resorted to always jumping back to the box, only if I got stuck. And once again, the little penguin dude was so tricky. I don't know why those pieces threw me off. As you saw, I left the tree and kind of like um, the windows till the end. So I do try to build as much as possible and sort out some pieces till the end. And then Lake Como, well, let's just face it, I think that's my last try with the flip. I did much better at the full flip and sorting as I full flipped. I think that's probably my best full flip kind of experience, but I think with the limited space on the table we have to work with and just with how I work in general, I don't think I will ever perfect that technique or get my best time at it. 
So we're gonna leave the full flip as is. It's a combination of full sort or build as I sort. However, the next jigsaw puzzle that I'm going to do will be this one right here. This one's called Knitter's Delight. And I wanna try one new technique. I've already mentioned it before. I saw it on Vicky Puzzles. It's kinda of like she left all the pieces in the box. It's almost like a build as you sort, but she left the pieces in the box and would shake the box and kinda of shuffle the pieces up and pick out pieces that she wanted. And she tried to build as much as she could, but then also sorted some stuff into piles to leave till the end. So for example, I would maybe pick out the dark pieces and pile them up. And then, you know, maybe grab the light blue pieces or like this checkered pattern and try to build them, shake the box, see if I can find more pieces. I haven't really done that before. I typically just grab piece after piece from the box, but I'm gonna try to do her build as I shuffle <laughs> technique. I, all these names I'm coming up with, who knows? But that's what I'm going to do for this one. So in the next video, you will see me probably speed puzzle a 500 piece with Wendy, our first go at really speed puzzling with someone else. You'll see me do my, well, Vicky's build as I shuffle technique. See how I go with that. It's my first try, who knows? And then I'll pick out another one to do as well. Probably a more difficult one. I have a couple of different photographs in there that are quite difficult from that shopping hall, that Ravensburger shopping hall that I did. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying, but I'm feeling a little stuck. I feel I'm at like the one hour, 13 minute mark on average. And I don't know how to get faster. I don't know what to do to improve. I'm trying so hard to get under the one hour mark, but I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. I'm speed puzzling one puzzle a week because I have other things to do. I know some people do speed puzzles almost daily. I don't tend to repeat the puzzles because I don't know if that would really help me. Should I redo a puzzle? Perhaps if I've gone through all my stash of 500 piece Robinsburger puzzles, then I'll go back and, and do the one that I had done the furthest in the past and try to redo it. Um, I don't know if there's a benefit. I am trying to limit myself on the table to the space that will be given to us at the competition, which I think is good to do because I see some people, especially who do the full flip and they're all spread out on a table and that's a lot more room that you actually have to work with at the competition. So it, thank you. There were some viewers here that told me that I should start limiting my space to what I have at the competition. I think that's helping. I'm speed puzzling a lot out and about with people in public. I think that's helping too. But I don't know, I just feel a little stuck, a little disheartened. If you have any words of advice or encouragement and, and maybe this is as fast as I'm gonna get and that's fine. I'm very pleased that I'm pretty much always within the 90 minute qualification mark. I'm proud of that. I'm trying different techniques. I'm trying different puzzles. For example, this one, I know I'm gonna love a lot of it, but I'm not gonna enjoy the cat fur and the dark areas will probably be tricky, but I'm, you know, I'm making myself do it because if I only do the puzzles that I like, like the illustration, that's not gonna help me improve. But I'm getting there slowly but surely. Oh. So let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Any more advice or, or words of encouragement are greatly appreciated. In the next speed puzzling compilation video, hopefully you'll see Wendy and I do a pairs together. I have no idea how that will go, but I think we puzzle well together. So hopefully that'll be good. I'll also try that build as I shuffle technique. I do think the full flip is off the table. It's just not for me. I've tried it and I don't think I'll get my fastest time with that. So let's stick with my build as I sort or a full sort depending on the image. But who knows, perhaps the build as I shuffle technique will become one of my new favorites. So we'll see how I go with that. And in the meantime, I'll get cracking again. It's right here on the table on Educa's 42,000 piece around the world jigsaw puzzle. I'm sitting here trying to make sure that I don't um, have any of the pieces come apart. I was moving these boxes on the table and I broke a whole section of Mount Rushmore. Ugh. Yes, I nearly cried. Seriously, I nearly cried. But that video will be coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.
For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao!